Hi, this is Russell Stunner from teachertraininvideos.com. Got a great technology for you today. If you're looking to build more kind of interaction with your audience, either in a live session or when you're teaching online using something like Zoom. It's a free tool, or we can obviously use it as a free tool. There is a paid version as well. It's called Mentimeter. And the, one of the reasons I've chosen it is that you get so many activity types. What I'm gonna do in this presentation is show you some examples take you through exactly how I build them. And to make it more interesting, I'm gonna give you both the teacher's view and the student's view. So this is complete training really in the free Mentimeter tool. Really hope you like the videos. As always, if you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it in the section below if you want to. And if you really wanna follow my work, come over to teachertrainingvideos.com, sign up to the newsletter. You get updated with all the latest videos and information and blogs and courses, etc. Right, let's get started. Let's start by looking at the free tool. And so I'm logged into mentimeter.com. I'm gonna click on my presentations. Uh, you can see that I've done quite a few. And the great thing about Mentimeter is that it can actually be used in lots of different ways. So we can create multiple choice questions. We can collect together opinions in some sort of discussion. Uh, we can kind of do a whole variety of things. If I click on new presentation, just to give you an example, and I'm just gonna call this test presentation. Uh, and then I click on create presentation, you'll see straight away just all of the options you got. Multiple choice, word cloud, open-ended, scale, ranking, Q&A, select an answer, type an answer. So loads of different questions. So what you can do when you're working with Mentimeter is you might be in a perhaps a presentation or perhaps presenting a few slides and you want to check the student's understanding. You can add in questions and see uh, what the reaction is of the student. So let's have a quick look at some examples of things that I've done with Mentimeter. Nice example, I just wrote a question, I shared the link, the students clicked on it and they were just sharing their ideas about how they might work with a technology like um, screencast technology. So I was just asking the question, what would you do if you worked with Snagit or screencast technology? And immediately I can get back the answers of the students. And the lovely thing is as their answers appear on the screen, it begins to scroll. So I can collect together all their answers on a particular uh, topic very, very quickly. It works a little bit like Padlet here, text-based, but the nice thing is that you can write quite a lot and um, all the content is obviously organized very quickly onto the screen and then of course everyone can look at the answers and then discuss them. For example, it's literally just a word cloud. So the same technology can be used for word clouds and people just had to put together, uh, we were looking at uh, buildings around the, uh, around the world using Google Earth and I just collected together people's ideas about what their favorite building was. This final example is a multiple choice. I was doing a presentation and then uh, someone commented on my accent. So I just quickly produced the question. So which country do you think I'm from? And I got people to vote on it. And 75% of the people said that uh, I was from England and they were correct. So you can see how useful it is. Now with the free tool, you can actually have three questions. You're not limited to one. Now you don't have to uh, do presentations. I often do it where I just simply make a question. So you can see I've made the question here. I just simply click on the share button and I just share that link. I actually find that the quickest way for the students to answer. Now, if they got their mobile phones, another way to answer is for them simply to go to the website menti.com, menti.com and put in that code. But when you're teaching on Zoom or Microsoft Teams, and obviously the easiest thing to do is simply share that link in and the students click on it and write their answer and bang, you've got your answers. It's great for kind of getting um, informal feedback, you know, informal assessment, formative, what we call formative assessment during a lesson. Do, do they understand me? Are they following me, etc. So let's have a look then at how you create uh, some of these Mentimeters and it couldn't be easier. It really is very quick. So let's create a new presentation. So we're gonna call this one teacher training 
videos okay I'm gonna click on create presentation just gonna show you how quick and easy to do and um, for this one we're gonna do a word cloud so people just share their ideas I'm gonna click on there and I'm gonna say a uh, simple question I write the question here and I'm gonna say what is the hardest thing sorry about teaching online look how quick I can do this I just literally write the question I'm going to allow people to put in three answers I can even increase that if I want allow them to put in more so um, let's increase it to four and then I want the students to start answering this question straight away so I'm going to click on share and I'm going to share this link so I'm going to copy here now the great thing is I can jump over and log in now as a student and show you what this is going to look like So here we are, um, let's imagine I'm a student, I've clicked on that link, this is where I'm going to go, it's going to allow me, I can see the question at the top, top and I can write in four possible words, so I'm going to write stressful, um, inspiring, because sometimes it is inspiring and you learn new things, um, engaging, because sometimes it can be engaging teaching online, but I'm also going to say that it's frustrating. I think it's a kind of uh, a bit of everything at the moment. I think a lot of teachers are beginning to get on top of it and beginning to kind of pick up, pick up techniques and stuff, but it is a very tough um, world to be working in. I'm going to click on submit. So that's one student has answered the question. Now let's jump back and see what the teacher is seeing. So coming back into the teacher account, already those four words are already up on the screen. And we've even got a special presentation mode. Now just to show you how interesting it is, let's add a few more answers. Let's log in as another student. So I'm logged in now as a different student and I'm just going to add some more answers. So I'm back now as a teacher and you can see now there are new words up on the screen. So as different students answer, all of those answers are collected together in the screen, on the screen. And of course, it's really nice because you can play the presentation mode. Great in the Zoom session, screen share, or great in a live session, project it on the screen. Now let's just go back and do another one. So we're going to click on your presentations. Okay, we're going to click on new presentation and we're going to call this... Um, answer choice all right so what we're going to do in this second one is actually give the students a choice so we're doing it like a multiple choice so again don't forget you can have up to three questions in this example let's try a different question type and we'll do select answer so we're going to click on this option select answer we write the answer the question in what which one of these is a virtual learning environment Okay, and we're going to put down here Moodle, which is the correct answer. And then we're going to choose, for example, um, Google Sites, which is really for web development, and Blogger, which is obviously a blogging tool. And then what I need to do when I do this is I need to say which one is correct. So I'm going to click on that one there. And I can even set a time. So I'm going to give people 25 seconds to answer the question. Okay, so really, really simple. Again, super quick. That's what I love. And what I love is, again, how easy it is to do this. So click on theme. Sorry, not click on theme. Apologies. Click on share and share that link. As I've said before, another way is if students have got, for example, a mobile phone in front of them, they go to Mentimeter. Yeah, Menti, men, not Mentimeter, sorry, Menti.com, Menti.com, and simply add in uh, that digit code and then answer the question. So that's another way of accessing. We're going to do it this way. Let's log in again as a, as a student and see exactly what happens for the student. Now, because this is a time one, you actually have to start it. So you just click on present and then click on enter countdown. And from the moment that you enter onto the press enter to, the, to start the countdown, you've then got 25 seconds. I'm going to jump over to the student's view and quickly now enter into that um, Mentimeter connecting. I've got to choose my answer. I've only got 25 seconds or whatever I set. I'm going to click on the answer and then uh, it's going to tell you in a minute if you got it wrong or right. Don't forget in this particular case, you do need to kind of start the quiz because you've got a specific time frame for um, doing the quiz so you do actually have to click on present and click on enter to start the quiz and then from that moment the students have got 25 seconds so keep that in mind uh, because of course um, they'll probably need a few seconds to actually log into the site you can see how easy this technology is
now if I jump back into the teacher view I can see that one person's voted and I can see their answer and I can see that they got it correct so a brilliant way and also I, obviously I can visualize this of getting the students to um, put uh, you know to just check that they understand something and to get immediate feedback which you can project onto the screen or project onto your classroom whiteboard if you're in a lesson super handy um, aspect of working with uh, Mentimeter is that if you want to kind of clean the screen to start again just click on this button here and then you can reset it so for this slide or for all slides if you perhaps had a few slides with maybe two questions then you can reset the slides and start again so that button's really useful there's quite a few settings here that can be some of them are quite nice first of all you can add additional answers you're not always limited to three remember if you're going to do a question like this make sure you choose the correct answer um, so that can be handy if you come up here you've got these themes which you can use if you kind of want to make it look a little bit different some of them are really nice they work really well for example if you're projecting it onto a screen perhaps if your presentation that you're using uh, has got a certain color and you want it all to blend in and before you can have up to three questions so I've added what three different questions to this one presentation so you've got three different questions for the students to answer a word cloud and uh, a couple of questions that are um, one that's got a specific answer, one that's a word cloud, and one that's a voting one, so where students just vote. Okay, now if I wanted to add another Clark, uh, slide into this presentation, you'll notice it says that you've reached the maximum. So you are limited to just three questions, but that's not bad at all for a free tool. Like I mentioned before you can import a uh, slide, so you could have, say, a few presentation slides and then a question, then a few more presentation slides. Now you'll notice that to actually use that facility, you have to uh, pay. If you want to come back to your presentations, always click down here on the left hand side. You can access your presentations here. Uh, remember, you can always just open up an old presentation, edit it, and then use it again. Really, really easy. You can also organize your presentations into folders. I haven't got that many yet that I need to do that. You might be interested in upgrading. If you want to upgrade, then look here. That gives you a bit more information of all the things you get in the uh, paid tool. That is a pretty good overview of Mentimeter free technology. Uh, there are a couple of other things that you can look into, but the basics of it, and obviously one thing to look at is just the number of uh, variety we have which we haven't obviously focused on just simply because there are too many but there is a real variety of questions and it's well worth uh, looking into those questions and trying them out and seeing how they work and the great thing is if you open up another browser so for example I've got Google Chrome open on my computer and uh, Microsoft Edge you can log in on another browser as a student and see exactly how the technology works Okay, I really hope that video was useful. Please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads and loads more free videos. There's a great section here at the top with some really popular um, sections in it, like the ones on teaching online, the ones on Zoom, etc. So just choose any of those. All the videos are free. If you want to keep up with my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. That way you keep up to date with all the online courses, the webinars the blog posts i write and of course the new videos that i produce you can also of course subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, i think there's nearly 50,000 subscribers and finally if you were looking to kind of contact me to do an online course with you uh, either one-to-one -one or perhaps one with a group of people doing lots of work around Moodle at the moment and Camtasia and of course Zoom and Adobe Connect and various tools then you can contact me from the website and thank you very much.